Hello guys, how are you all? Namaste everyone. This is Maithili Aburi Zoology faculty from Infinity Learn. So we have started this lecture series where I have taught a bit of human reproduction from the 12th class the other day and simultaneously I did promise that I would do chapters from 11th also. So this would be the lecture series that we are going to start from 11th class and animal kingdom here it is that's the chapter we are going to start with whether you are in a repeaters batch whether you are in your class 11 this class is for you in case you want to get into the infinity learn website you want to enroll in any of the courses here it is you get to use the coupon code Yes, you can use the coupon code MYTHILI20. Yes, that's MYTHILI20 and you get that discount in whichever course that you want to enroll once you get into Infinity Learn website. Do not let go of this opportunity. Great opportunity you have there getting a discount by using this coupon code MYTHILI20. 20 M Y T H I L I two zero. So that's your coupon code in case you want to avail that discount. Jaldi, jaldi, jaldi enroll kijiye and do subscribe, like, and share our videos. Very, very, very useful ones. These are for free right now. So the make the best use of it. So as usual, let's start with a quote: "Learning never exhausts mind." I'm going way, way, way back to Leonardo da Vinci time. So uh, if at all you're not familiar with the name, also Mona Lisa, that painting, right, is something that many of you would have heard. And what a beautiful way did he say that learning is something that is never exhausting in your mind. The iron he is that this is something which is giving you a lot of exercise to the mind, but still is not exhausting you like the physical exercise you do in a gym or so beautiful mind that God has given us, which is never ever exhausted by learning. That's why at Infinity Learn, we say learning is infinite, right? So let's get to the chapter animal kingdom. What are the general characteristics of animal? Which are the beings that we can call animals, right? Which are the organisms that we are referring to as animals? What sets us apart from the uh, plants, right? So here are the characteristics. First, we go with meta zones. So animals are the meta zones so meta is something wherever you come across this prefix it basically means a secondarily secondarily formed organisms i'll go uh, uh, more deeper into it when we are doing the classification part they are all multicellular this is a previous neat question guys multicellularity without any exception is a characteristic of all the organisms that come under meta Zoa, right? Heterotrophs. Troph again is a suffix. Wherever you come across, it got something to do with the food. Heterotrophs. These are the ones which are depending on others for their food. Unlike plants, we cannot produce our own food. So we are dependent on the others for food. So what do we call ourselves? Heterotrophs. Most ingest food and digest in an internal cavity, right? If you can recall repeaters about the digestion chapter, what did we learn there? It's all about the alimentary canal, how the food is being ingested, how it is digested, how it is undergoing ingestion, also the unwanted waste and also that's how it takes place. It is taking place and this is something that we are going to learn in more detailed manner once we get it to the physiology chapters. Animal cells lack cell walls, unlike the plant, right? This is something which is devoid of the cell wall. Collagen is a protein which is most unique and abundant to animals, can be an MCQ. What's the most abundant protein in the animal group? That would be collagen, right? Just like that Trubisco you learn of in your botany. So collagen is the protein which is unique and which is quite abundant as well. 
motility locomotion that is something which is definitely definitely setting us you know distinct from the plant group we are able to locomote right uh, the change in the position this is uh, right now i am uh, you know exhibiting the locomotion so locomotion is something that is done either to search for food shelter protection to find a mate right so this is something that we are blessed with unlike the plants which cannot move right and mostly sexual reproduction yes there's reproduction also that is exhibited by as offspring are born and this is something which is mostly sexual okay although there is an asexual reproduction that is seen in some of the lower organisms like sponges porifera is the next phylum that we are going to deal with once after we are done with the basis for classification right so uh yes there are this asexual reproduction some of the lower organisms but still sexual reproduction it is mostly so what are we learning in animal kingdom today basis of classification what basis are we classifying the organism what does the ncert text says why do we have to classify the organisms at all there are millions of organisms millions and millions of organisms yet to be discovered already discovered and it is very very important to assign a systematic position because of which we need to classify the organisms on what basis are we classifying the organisms uh, for example in a school there are children who belong to the first grade there are certain others to the 10th grade and people like you belong to 11th and 12th on what basis are you being classified what is the basis factor there the age right the ability to learn how much of uh, the ability is required the intelligence the uh, uh, question uh, is required you know for each of the and most generally we are going by the age basis of course there are exception people who are you know completing their uh, you know graduation in their teens itself so uh, you know very as early as 12 13 there are exceptional cases but general panorama if you take it's the age that's the basis just like that how are we classifying the organisms it's the level of organization whether they composed of just the cells are the cells forming the tissues are they together forming the organs or they forming a network like organ systems right symmetry how are they arranged how are the body parts arranged there's a certain symmetry to it there's a certain geometry involved that's symmetry diploblastic triploblastic organization i am going to talk about this shortly with the diagrams the coelom the term may sound fancy nothing it's just a body cavity cavity within the body is what is referred to as the coelom the fate of blastopore there is this opening in the embryonic stage whether it's forming the mouth first or is it the mouth that is forming later point of time we have the protostomia group and the deuterostomia the segmentation very very easy term to understand whether the body is segmented whether some or most of the organs are being repeated notochord yes that's another structure present at the embryonic stage which is may or may not be replaced by the vertebral column this is something that you would have learnt in your high school as well i know most of you are recalling that so let's get started all the organisms with the general characteristics that we have discussed so far whether they are heterotrophs eukaryotes mostly sexual reproduction exhibiting locomotion all these come under metazoa so the metazoa is again branched basically into parazoa and you metazoa para is something that you know branched sidelined so this is one phylum that i want you to remember very very well lot of questions possible mcqs as far as that only phylum that is under the parazoa which is porifera also simply referred to as commonly sponges porifera is the only phylum that we have under parazoa so why is this 
you know something that is branched out this is the only phylum only animals which although exhibiting multicellularity do not form tissues so this is coming under what the cellular level of organization they are the ones which are belonging to cellular level of organization you may ask ma'am uh, they are multicellular why are these group of cells not forming a tissue why not just call them the tissue level of organization there is no sensory or coordination system right there are no sensory or the nervous system that's existing in these each of these cells are uh, exhibiting a division of labor each of the cells are you know performing different functions and this is the cellular level of organization exhibited by porphyrins and this is also given that nickname very aptly blind of shoot of evolution just with that title you understand a lot about this phylum that would be our next class in animal kingdom look out for l2 of animal kingdom which will be the phylum porifera right it is referred to the aptly called the blind of shoot of the evolution coming to you metazoa the very word you please 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 do remember this eu is standing for true these are the true metazoans except for porifidans whichever non chordate phyla that we are going to discuss the chordate classes that we are going to discuss until us the advanced human beings everybody else are coming under what you metazoan if i have to frame a tricky question there what is the basic level of organization in you metazoans just in case you miss that eu you might answer cellular level of organization no that's not right it is the tissue level of organization that would be the basic when it comes to the you metazoans right so that's the level of organization a beautiful picture given us uh, to us by our artists right so atom for molecules to macromolecules to the organelles now this is something where you uh, would have learnt in your favorite chemistry classes right so we are not going into the levels of atomic level or the molecular level that's something that we are leaving for your chemistry lecturers the favorite ones and we start from what our basic unit when we talk about the life sciences biology or zoology in particular we are going to talk about the cell what's our basic structural functional unit it boils down to the cell cells together what do they form tissue as i said cells are something cellular level of organization what is the only phylum again let me recall it for you it's the sponges porifera so these cells become tissues now what do we mean by tissue it's a group of cells which are performing a specific function have uh, are similar in their origin right and these tissues are some things which are performing a very very specific function what are the two phyla that we have under tissue level of organization it's nidaria and tinophora if we have only sponges under the cellular level of organization under tissue we have nidaria and tinophora these tissues together form what do they form organs under organ we have only one phylum that is given our ncrt text a little ambiguous there sometimes referred to as organ system also organ level also but if you are specifically given an mcq organ level you go with platyhelminthes the flatworms so tissues are becoming organ organs together are coordinating very very well with each other to form what organ system and that's where we start from askihelminthes till the most complex chordates so all the organisms exhibit the organ system level of organization you can see the man's picture there which forms finally an organism so what are our levels of organization cellular level of organization 
tissue level of organization, organ level of organization, organ system level of organization. And if you are frequently asked question about levels of organization, it would be cellular, which is porifera sponges, tissue, we have two phyla under that, nidaria and tenophora, then organ, platyhelminthus, organ system from Aschihelminthus till caudates, whichever phyla, whichever class that you are given, we are going to say it's organ system level of organization. Different organs, how they coordinate among themselves, different systems, the integrated physiology, that's the hot field nowadays. Integrated physiology is something that our research is concentrating upon right now, right? So, as and when organ systems are getting complicated, as I said, many of them are working together. We are talking about first the complete and incomplete digestive system, the alimentary canal. What all you can do with the PowerPoint nowadays? I know you smarter generation can up, come up with a lot more miracles when given a PPT. But, you know, this is something that I'm all with, like how a simple diagram explains a beautiful biology concept. Look at this particular structure. It's incomplete gut or we are basically talking about incomplete digestive system. Why are we referring it to as incomplete? There's only one opening, right? There's just one opening whether it is for ingestion, that is whether it is wanting to consume its food or whether it is throwing away the waste by ingestion. Normally, in the alimentary canal, what do you have learnt in your high school level itself? What do you know of? This mouth for ingestion, this anus for ingestion. Here on the other hand, these lower organisms, they have a single opening, whether it's for taking in the food or removing the waste, right? So this is what is an incomplete gut also referred to as blind sack bore plan what a beautiful name again right you know your rice sacks that are in the kitchen right so there's rice that is poured from when whether it is wheat flour rice there's only one opening right you put in the grains or the flour into it and the other end is closed what if the other end is also open right it's leaking away this closes only one opening it's a blind sack so this is also referred to as the blind sack, bore plan. What do I mean by bore plan? Nothing but body plan, short end form, right? Bore plan, just like you people use those WhatsApp texting, IDK, I don't know. So there are a lot of things that I'm trying to learn also to keep up with the you smart younger generation, right? You don't waste much of an energy with WhatsApp and all you use shortened forms, nice. But what happens is some of you tend to bring that to your examination paper also. That's when trouble comes, right? You need to know your full forms as well. Don't use WhatsApp language when you're writing your tests, right? So complete gut. So what are we talking about complete gut? As I told, this, there are two openings. When there are two openings, What's happening? The food is being taken through the mouth. This is how ingestion is happening. And what about the other opening? It's helping with the ingestion, right? So it is a complete digestive system. This is incomplete digestive system. This is complete. What are the examples that you can... Platyhelminthus, say for example, has a blind sac, right? Platyhelminthus, the flatworms. All the others obviously come under the complete gut, right? Another example for of a system which can be branched, circulatory system. So circulatory system can be open or it can be closed. So what do we mean by open circulatory system? The tissues are directly bathed in the blood, okay? The tissues are directly bathed in the blood. There's no closed network of system. Right? So, when there is a closed network of tubules which precisely carry the blood, what is the advantage you got there? The blood pressure is something that can be maintained in a better manner. So, lower organisms have this open circulatory system and others have the closed. Of course, in between you will see exception after closed started in Annelida, Arthropoda again has an open circulatory system. Right? 
So open circulatory system, there may be blood vessels, large open ended blood vessels. If you take arthropoda example or these non cephalopod mollusks, you should be very, uh, you know, paying attention there. Mollusca is something which can be categorized either ways because there's this group in mollusca called cephalopods. They are going to exhibit the closed circulatory system, all the others. That's why when you are specifying the example, you need to be careful. You say non cephalopod mollusks are the ones which exhibit the beautiful snail picture you got there. It's gastropoda. It is something that's exhibiting the open circulatory system. The blood flows openly into a cavity called hemoseal and the blood is what is referred to as the hemolymph. The open spaces are what are called as the sinuses. Sinuses are the open system. Here on the other hand you see there is a closed network of tubules through which the blood is actually flowing. Right? So the pressure can be regulated better obviously. This is closed circulatory system as I already mentioned and Alida is an example you can use here arthropoda or whether it is non cephalopod mollusca or you can also give an example of the echinodermata all these are exhibiting the open circulatory system caudates also all of the the Pisces, the amphibians, the reptiles, the you know the mammals, aves, all those are exhibiting obviously the closed circulatory system, the chordates, right? So before understanding the symmetry, geometrical arrangement of body parts, certain terminology that I want you to be aware of. The fish is a better diagram for you to understand that the frontal part is what is referred to as the anterior end. Anterior is the frontal and the tail part, the caudal is what is referred to as the posterior. The upper part you see is what is called as dorsal and the lower part is what is referred to as the ventral. So this is important that you know these little terms, they will be used throughout your NCRT text, throughout your class 11, 12, you will be seeing these words. So it's important you understand the frontal, the anterior is something you know uh, like your face, say sensory organs are going to be concentrated there in the bilateral symmetry when you are talking about. That will be anterior end, the tail end will be posterior end, the upper one is called dorsal and the lower is what is referred to as the ventral. So speaking of symmetry, geometrical arrangement of body parts around an imaginary line, an imaginary line axis, right? Look at this particular diagram that you see on the uh, board right now. That is a sponge. Can you divide this organism into two equal halves, whether by this plane, this plane, this plane, this plane? No, you can't divide this organism into two equal halves in any which way is possible. What are we referring it to as? Asymmetry. A simple trick I'll give you in biology for you to understand any definition now don't go by all the definitions right most of the definitions you're not make, making out what it is you are in the examination fear would have forgotten a is something that is talking about absence i'll talk about more in some of the upcoming words also asymmetry absence of symmetry it's asymmetrical sponges the very first phylum again it's not completely mostly asymmetrical why are we using the term mostly because there are some of them which are exhibiting radial symmetry as well right so what is asymmetry as simple as that no particular symmetry no way you can get two equal halves of this organism you cut it in any which ways possible like the birthday cakes that they are making nowadays beautiful beautiful cakes that you get nowadays that's pullover cake right this pinata cake i've uh, recently learned about in of one of the friends uh, you know children's birthday parties this this Barbie ones, this car ones, you cannot divide these ones into simple. Previously, I used to give an example of a simple circular cake for radial symmetry. As long as your knife is passing through the center, right, you get two equal halves, any which way is possible. Take a circular birthday cake. Now, I can't say that huge, huge variety of cake that are available. So, this is something that you cannot divide the organism into two equal halves, any which way is possible. What are we referring to it to as? asymmetrical. What is the example? Porifrance. 
radial symmetry look at this like a beautiful flower was there right the hydra as long as your plane of division is passing through the central point as long as your plane of division your knife say for example on your circular birthday cake is passing through that central point right that mid dot in the circle you use in your geometry classes right so as long as it is passing through that you get two equal halves so what is this referred to as radial symmetry which are the two phyla that you give as an example for this it's nidaria tenophora these are the two phyla you give as an example for radial symmetry you get two equal halves as long as the plane of division is passing through the central point right bilateral symmetry you got that beautiful butterfly there only one plane of division passing through the central axis divides the organism into two equal halves it is literally making mirror images they are referred to as antimeres for a reason they make mirror images right so that's what is bilateral symmetry bi is for two lateral for the sides it is clearly making two sides right now as we are clear example of bilateral symmetry we can be made into two equal halves mirror images by one plane of division passing through the central axis bilateral symmetry there are exceptions again exceptions are always always important in biology mcqs always concentrate on exceptions so that is one other trick i've just given you for your neat examination concentrate on your exceptions don't go by the general thing that's what nowadays many advertise also be don't follow the herd you be the unique one yes right so that is one uh, little trick i give you there so what is the exception you look at this larval form of the sea star many of you would have found this on the beaches you go on the vacation you play have a good time on the beach there are chances that you find these star fishes you are very very excited when you find them right so these sea stars when they are the babies the larval forms right so these exhibit a perfect bilateral symmetry you cut them into two equal halves but when they become adults with the five arms looking like that star in the sea not in the night sky that's why we are referring to them as star fishes the old name sea stars the new name right so look at these sea stars they can be divided into two equal halves as long as it is passing through the central points what did it become radial symmetry and why did i add that in the brackets pentamerous five ways five ways you get two equal halves it has got five arms right so as a young one baby is it is exhibiting bilateral it becomes adult what does it exhibit radial symmetry beautiful example for the exception and most of the time as you move from porifera uh, after radial you start seeing bilateral symmetry whether it is platyhelminthes askehelminthes arthropods right but there will be some exceptions in between mollusca i am coming there like the gastropods all of you know those snails those beautiful creatures that are very very slow creeping you would have observed look at that snail can you divide this organism into two equal halves in any which way is possible no so that's an asymmetry as a larva yes again it is exhibiting bilateral symmetry it becomes adult it is becoming asymmetrical this is one exception and you move to echinodermata larva is bilateral adult is a radial so these are two exceptions which can be framed your mcqs so you need to know a little bit about embryonic development before i talk about diploblastic triploblastic conditions or the coelom and all so zygote is formed you know the sperm and ovum meet it starts dividing it's called cleavage it starts dividing from eight cell stage to a hollow ball structure called blastula and then this blastula further undergoes gastrulation basically what is happening all the cells that are dividing they are uh, trying to arrange themselves into layers these layers if it is the external one what are we referring to is ectoderm ecto is the outer endoderm endo within right in the middle is what is referred to as the mesoderm so this embryonic development story i'm just giving you to make you understand as and when the cells are dividing 
they are arranging themselves into the layers right so if you look at this the textbook given diagram also i have had it also our own diagrams just so that you get a better understanding look at this structure there's only ectoderm and endoderm in your ncrt there's mesoglia that is added glia is nothing but glue right in the middle so meso meso glia as simple as that so there are only two layers the outer ectoderm and the uh, inner endoderm so what are we referring to these organisms diploblastic organisms di mane two diploblastic organisms the embryonic germ layers that we have or only two ectoderm endoderm on the other hand triploblastic advanced they have a middle layer also some of the cells that are dividing right in the middle they are also forming another layer right in the middle which is the mesoderm represented by this red layer your ncrt diagram right so if there are three primary germ layers we are referring it to as triploblastic if there are two we are calling it diploblastic right so diploblastic have an ectoderm there's a mesoglia glue like substance in between and endoderm what is the example we have celentirates nidaria then there is ectoderm mesoderm endoderm what are the examples from platyhelminthes two cordes without any exception we are all triploblastic we have three primary germ layers right and the coelom very 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 important concept whether it is for your boards neat everywhere it is quite important coelom as i said nothing but body cavity the space that's within the body you look at a coelomate a coelomate is something that has no body cavity another example right away right what did i tell about a symmetry absence of symmetry a coelom absence of coelom absence of body cavity there's no body cavity at all right it's tightly packed it can be referred to as a solid plan also if you look at platy helminthes instead of the cavity they have a tissue called parenchyma i'm going to explain that when we are doing platy helminthes phylum later point of time right so basically understand that there's no cavity in these organisms right that would be a coelomate if you're talking about that central one that's a lumen that's alimentary canal right that will be the alimentary canal so you look at pseudo coelomates wherever you come across this prefix pseudo mane what is that false so they have a coelom but still why are we calling them false no they are the cheaters just kidding why are they referred to as pseudo coelomates because there is a cavity as you can see right but the mesoderm which is supposed to line right what happens is there's an ectoderm there's an endoderm in between there will be mesoderm within that mesoderm let me take another color green maybe so there is a cavity that is formed that will be referred to as a true coelom so it has to be what happens that it's lined by the mesoderm on either side but what is happening here mesoderm itself is forming scattered pouches in between that's why we call this a pseudo coelom let me get back that maroon again so what is the example we have under this aschihelminthes very 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 important example we have only one phylum remember pseudo coelom is something that's present in aschihelminthes what about this yes as i mentioned here there is an outer ectoderm there is inner endoderm in between there's a mesoderm within mesoderm there's a cavity that is formed so what are we calling it a coelomate so from annelida to arthropoda to mollusca to all chordates everyone is exhibiting the coelomates but especially these three will be exhibiting a different kind of a u coelom which is a schizo coelom schizo and entero coelom is based on how they are formed based on the formation again we have different types most of the time these three phyla are together for some of the examples you can simply remember by the trick ma ma is a simple word right mollusca arthropoda 
annelida. So these are some things which if you are together you can call it ma. These are some things which are exhibiting a schizocelom. We will be talking about it as and when we talk about some more non chordate phylum. Simple to understand metamerism what did we talk about the segmentation. What better example can we give when we look at about this neris. Neris is an marine annelid. Yes, by the way, animals are different habitats. They live on the land, terrestrial. They live in water, aquatic. Within aquatic, they can be fresh water. They can be living in the sea, marine. There are some which love trees, arboreal. You got them right, monkeys. There are some which fly, aerial. The kind of habit, some of them move quite fast. Like the cockroaches, they are moving around quite fast, cursorial. There are some things which you feel creepy about. Some things which are crawling on those walls you would have seen the lizards scansorial so habitat habit something that's differing different kinds of organisms right so what you see is nice segmentation throughout the body where most of the organs are you know evenly distributed so the organs are repeated at least one organ and the thing is the segmentation should be both outside and within the seg only then it is a true segmentation. You take a tapeworm for example, flatworm, it is exhibiting segmentation only on the upper surface. Pseudo again, that is a pseudo metamerism. Then these segments are exactly similar, not possible in the nature but closest you can give nearest, it is a homonomous metamerism. Segments are not so similar, heteronomous. Say for example, arthropods is divided into head, thorax, abdomen, right? Heteronomous metamerism, you can also call it tagmatization. Tagmata are groups of segments working towards a specific function. So the body is segmented both internally, externally. Segments are usually added from the posterior end, like in the tapeworm, they are added from the anterior end, neck region. That's why pseudo metamerism. Here it is being added from the tail end it is segmented both within and externally so this is the true segmentation or metamerism we also exhibit notochord finally a rod like structure in the embryonic stage look at that beautiful rod like structure flexible mesodermally derived later replaced by the vertebral column or backbone if it is replaced by the vertebral column we call it vertebrates if not invertebrates. There are organisms where the notochord persists like that only throughout the life like the cartilaginous fishes or the cyclostomes that we are talking about later point of time, right? Where is this notochord? It is above the alimentary canal but look at it, it is below the nerve cord. Nerve cord is again different, right? And yo we say dorsal, also remember its positioning, it is above the alimentary canal and beneath the dorsal hollow nerve cord. So, it is a dorsal flexible rod like structure present mesodermally derived present in the embryonic stage may or may not be replaced by the vertebral column. So, what do we divide the organisms into based on whether or not the cord is present? It is present we call them chordates. It is absent we call them non chordates. They do not have the noto cord right so uh, then we have the little quiz that I have prepared for you just so that you carry on you know what did we learn or what did we take from the session for take home identify the type of coelom you know the answer right the mesoderm is being scattered into pouches the cavity is present but not lined by the mesoderm what is it it's the pseudo coelom can you give the example i know you are quoting the example as well ascii helminthus right define bilateral symmetry a plane of division that is passing through the central axis can divide the organism into two equal halves you saw that beautiful butterfly picture there most of the sponges are i did tell you why you should use the most of the term also because some of them are radial Mostly they cannot be divided into two equal halves by any plane of division. So they are C, asymmetrical. They do not have any symmetry at all. Phylum Nidaria exhibits. What is the level of organization? Cellular, porifera, tissue we have, 
Two examples, Nideria and Tinophora. So, Nideria exhibits what level of organization? It will be tissue level of organization. Blind sac bar plan. There's only a single opening both for ingestion as well as edition. Incomplete digestive system. It is exhibited by flatworms. So, it is platy helminthes. That's your example for the blind sac bar plan. Solid bar plan can you recall? No cavity at all. Again the platy helminthes. This is also what is called as tube within tube bar plan. There is an alimentary canal within and there is the outer body wall also tube within tube bar plan. Right. So that is also a certain body plan that is exhibited by all these higher organisms which have a complete digestive system right which is almost starting from the ascii helminthus to the caudates we are exhibiting that a tube inserted into another tube look at these daily things and recall the symmetry today you will just remember look at that you know flower pot that you see around it kind of exhibits the radial symmetry look at that video game remote that you play with asymmetry you can the buttons are so uh, dispersed in such a manner that you cannot get an equal symmetry with that look at that beautiful umbrella if you're going out in the monsoon what kind of symmetry that it is exhibiting relate your textual with the daily things you can just remember don't study or mug or you know just for the sake of you know this is studies this is not my league this is not cup of my cup of tea relate it with your daily things and that makes your learning beautiful and that is what creates that craving for learning in you so that's mightily zoology faculty from infinity learn for today next up we bring another beautiful session from animal kingdom which is phylum porifera the first non caudate phylum till then happy learning and thank you for a patient listening